Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Minister Red. I am the pastor of Christ Our Life Ministries located in Augusta, Georgia on 308 Rose Street, directly behind the Walmart Lowe's on Bobby Jones Expressway, Interstate 520 heading west. I want to thank you for joining me for my worship services every Sunday at 11 a.m. and for Bible study every Thursday night at 7 p.m. I'm sure you'll be blessed. I want to also thank you for joining me with my members. Amen. Brother Roland and Sister Brittany Peachy, Sister Selena and our beautiful husband Stan, my brother Harry Evans, amen, and we want to continue to remember his wife, amen, Sister Beverly Conyers Evans, who went home to be with the Lord on March the 4th of this year. She was a pillar of this ministry. We love her. We miss her. Amen. God bless her soul. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for joining my sister church, Spirit of Liberty's Ministries. They have services every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Spirit of Liberty's Ministries is pastored by the phenomenal minister, Kenya King, and his beautiful wife, Sister Donna King. You ought to join them and be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. I am on YouTube. I am on YouTube. Amen. There are over 200 messages on my YouTube channel. You ought to join me to be blessed on YouTube. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Tonight's message, amen. Part three of thoughts. Part three of thoughts. James says in John, in James 4 and 8, he says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Let us go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for another opportunity to come before your presence and to tell you that we love you. You mean everything to us, God. Without you, there would be no us. Without you, there would be no purpose for looking for any type of happiness down here on this planet. Oh, God, we love you today. We love you so much, God. Hallelujah. We just love you. We love you. We love you. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thoughts. Amen. Part three. Thoughts. Part three. Hallelujah. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Amen. Thoughts. I wish, I wish I could get believers to truly understand that everything which impacts our life arises from thoughts. Hallelujah. Everything that impacts our life arises from thoughts. Why? Because thoughts are the seeds of our conduct. Thoughts are the seeds of our conduct. Amen. Hallelujah. If we let thoughts lead us in life, at some time, if we let thoughts lead us in life, at some time, hey man, even years later, those thoughts will eventually become sinful acts. Hallelujah. Them thoughts will eventually become sinful acts, whether you like it or not. Hey Amen. If it, 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 Eve looked at the tree, she desired the tree. It, and it and after a while, them thoughts eventually became sinful acts, and she took of the tree and ate. Hallelujah. Improper thoughts over time produces improper conduct. Improper thoughts over time produces improper conduct. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is leading you? Who is leading you? Is the Holy Spirit leading you? Or are thoughts leading you? Oh, you know what's leading you. Hallelujah. If you ain't drawing nigh to God, I'm going to tell you right now. If you ain't drawing nigh to God, because it takes the Spirit to lead you to God. And if you ain't Drawing nigh to God by allowing the Spirit to lead you, then you're being led by thoughts that are leading you further and further 
away from God rather than to God. Hallelujah. I wish I could get everyone listening to me tonight to understand that the only difference between a good day and a bad day is your thoughts. I'm going to tell you, I'm, the hardest thing to do is to get people to understand that, especially church people. Trying to get them to understand that the only difference, the only difference between a good day and a bad day is your thoughts. What in the world are you thinking? What are you thinking? Hallelujah. Philippians 4 and 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. You, you See, first of all, if, if somebody tells a lie on you, you know it ain't true. So why you want to spend your time thinking about the lie that was told rather than the truth that you know? Because that's what, that's what I'm going I'm to show it again. The only difference, the only difference between a good day and a bad day is your thought. People are going to lie on you. You, you got to be willing to know that people are going to lie on you. You got to be willing to know that mankind is going to do stuff to you that's going to mess up your day and it's going to start making you think, why did they do that? When Philippians 4 and 8 tells us, it says, finally, brother, whatever whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue here's the key right here if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things see see it, 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 it ain't it ain't just giving you the ability to just do whatever you want. It is telling you that if there be any any virtue, if there's any virtue in anything that's true, if there's any virtue in anything that's honest, if there be any praise, think on these things. See, see, we 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 think we think on the wrong things. We think on the wrong things. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. Never let your thoughts overpower your belief. Never let your thoughts overpower your belief. Don't do that. Do not do that. If you either believe the word of God or don't. But if you're going to believe no weapon formed against you shall prosper, then you need to believe that. Because the only thing that's stopping you from believing that is a thought that you did not get from God, that you did not get from God. You 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 lack you lack the power of a sound mind. But you you quote you will quote Second Timothy of one and seven all day long. Look at it at the bottom of our notes right there. Second Timothy one and seven. It says, "For God, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love." And of a sound mind. So you got you got your mind got to be so sound that your belief is stronger than whatever it is that the enemy is gonna throw your way to get you to thinking. God ain't never commanded us to think. God has always commanded us to obey and to believe. He ain't never gave us a command to think. First Peter 1 13 says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up. Look at the definition of the word gird means to prepare oneself for something difficult or challenging. See, that's the problem right there. Y'all don't y'all don't never do y'all don't never prepare yourself. Ye, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what makes you think every day is going to be a good day. The Bible says sufficient unto the day is the evil devil. So, so you, you know there's going to be evil in every day that you wake up. So knowing this, knowing that there's going to be evil every day that we wake up, we have to gird up the loins of our mind. We got to gird up the loins of our minds. We got to be sober. 
and we got to hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You have got to gird up the loins of your mind. You've got to stop being loose in your thought process. Look at the definition of the word loose right there. It says not firmly or tightly fixed in place. Wandering. Moving aimlessly. So I'm going to tell, tell you, you got to stop having loose thoughts. We gotta we gotta stop this loose thought stuff. I was, if, cause if a person can't keep his thoughts under control, then that person will not find out that he is that he's not able to control anything. See, if you if you can't control your thoughts, you you're not gonna be able to control nothing. Something's going to always control you. Something always going to have you moving aimlessly in the decision-making process when all you're supposed to do is hold on to the word of God. If Peter's mind wouldn't have been loose, if Peter wouldn't have had a loose mind, Peter would have been able to get out the boat, walk on the water, and touch, and touch Jesus. But because Jesus, Peter had a loose mind, Peter had a, his mind wandered onto the wind and to the sea. Eyes looking at Jesus, mind sound, wind and sea picked up. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. What, what, what made Peter take his mind off Jesus? The thought of the wind and the sea picking up. The thought of the wind and the sea, which tells me that Peter was not girded up in his mind when he got out the boat. To gird, to prepare oneself for something difficult or challenging. I guess he must have thought he was just going to get out there on the water and get to walking. No, 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 no. You, you, but you can walk on the water, but you can walk through the problems that you face in your life, but you ain't going to be able to do it if you don't gird up the loins of your mind. You have got to learn. You have got to le learn how to gird up the loins of your mind. You're going to have to endure hardness as a good soldier. Endure hardness well. In the mind, endure hardness against what? Against thoughts. How do you do it? How do you do it? By drawing near to God. By drawing near to God. Psalm 73 and 28 says, It is good. It is good for me to draw near to God. If the psalmist is telling us that it is good for us to draw near to God, then why are we so far away from here? The word near is also means nigh. Look at the definition of it in our notes. At or to a very short distance away. It is good for me to draw at or to a very short distance away from God. I have put my trust in the Lord God. This is what the psalmist said. Have you put your trust in God? Have you put your trust in the Lord God? If you put your trust in the Lord God, then why in the world are you so far away from him? How do I know you're so far away from him? Because you walk around in fear. You walk around complaining. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. What, what works? What works is God doing for you? God ain't doing no work because if God was doing some work for you, then you wouldn't be complaining. You would just you would just hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle. But you ain't near God. Don't worry about it. I'm telling you, we're going to get to it in the nice teaching. Just how far you are away from God. Hallelujah. This verse says, it is good for me to draw near to God. It does not say anything about talking. That's all people do. People do a bunch of talking. That's all people. You got church people. All they do is a bunch of talking. This verse is. Uh, let's look at. Let's read the verse again. It is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God. 
that I may declare all thy works. This verse says it is good for me to draw near to God. It does not say anything about talking. Why? Matthew 15 and 8, Jesus says this people draw near to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I mean, your heart ain't near, your heart ain't near God. Your heart ain't near God. He's telling us that. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. What's doctrines? A set of beliefs held and taught by a church or group. In vain do they worship me, teaching a set of beliefs held by a church, the commandments of men. What about the commandments of God to tell you to not fear anything? What about the commandments of God that tell us that we are more than conquerors? What about that? Do you ever think about the fact that you are more than a conqueror? But no, but no, not you, because all you do is a bunch of talking. And then when you find yourself in a situation that's difficult or challenging, your mind begins to wander. Your mind wanders your, because you because you you got a loose mind. Your mind is loose. Somebody say something to you, you gone. Your, your, your thought process changes so fast because you, you don't know how to say no. You don't know how to say yeah, 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 nay, nay. You know, because your mind wanders. I, w I wonder what that. I wonder what that person gonna think if I tell them no. I wonder what that person gonna think if if I don't talk to them. I wonder. I I never think like that. I I don't care what you think about me. I don't care. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be overcome by by a thought that makes me think about what somebody think about me. Let's go back to it again. We're going back. Never let your thoughts overpower your belief. Come on, man. Be a friend of God. I'm a, be a friend of God. Stop trying to be friends with humans. Be a friend of God. If that, because if that person respects you as a friend of God, then that is a good friend. That is a good friend. A good friend will let you say no to them. A good friend will 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 will, will hear you when you say no, and will stop asking you the same doggone question over and over again. Because every time they ask you that question over and over again, all they're doing is wearing you out. Just like Daniel seven and twenty five says, you better read Daniel seven and twenty five. They're going to wear you out. They're going to wear you out with a bunch of talking. That's why the Bible says, well, I'm going to show it to you again. The Bible says nothing about talking. It says nothing. It says to draw not unto God, and he will draw not unto you. Look what Matthew 15, 18, and 19 says. Here it is, brother. That's why I wanted y'all to see this. Jesus says, those things which proceed out of the mouth. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> the, 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 Psalm 73 and 28 says, it is good for me to draw near to God. It don't say nothing about you talking. Why? Because Jesus tells us in Matthew 15, 18, and 19, it says, those things which proceed out of the mouth, those things that proceed out of the mouth, come forth from the heart and they defile the man for out of the heart proceed look at the very first thing that Jesus said that proceeds out of the heart evil thoughts once the evil thought takes over I told y'all we're going to go back to the verse we're going to go back to the slide I'm going back to the slide. I'm telling you. I'm, telling, I'm going back to the slide. My dear, thoughts are the seeds of our conduct. If we let thoughts lead us in life, at some time, even years later, those thoughts will eventually become sinful acts. Improper thoughts over time produces improper conduct. 
Jesus said it. He said, out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts. See, once that, once some evil thoughts kick in, once the evil thoughts kick in, then you, then that's when murders, people begin to murder people. People begin to commit adulteries. People begin to commit fornication. People begin to steal. People begin to be false witnesses. People begin to blaspheme. Murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, and blasphemes never come out. Of, it's, it's something that don't have to come out of the mouth. You don't have to, murdering somebody don't have to come out your mouth. When you murder, you murder, you, you tell a lie. It, mur it murders their relationship. But when Jesus is saying here with murders, Jesus talking about what doggone Cain did to Abel. Cain murdered Abel. Cain murdered him. Hallelujah. David had um, Uriah murdered. Told him to put him at the front of the battle because of the evil thoughts he had because he didn't got his wife pregnant and the man wouldn't go home and lay with his wife so that it would hide this David's sin of committing adultery with Uriah's wife. Evil thoughts. I'm telling you, evil thoughts, every, that's what I'm trying to say. Evil thoughts dominate our conduct. When a person commits adultery, they done thought about that thing. They done thought about that thing. They done thought about it. And then, over time, eventually, over time, those improper thoughts produce improper conduct. Fornications. You, you ain't even, you got people calling themselves born again believers in a relationship that is, that they have not said vows to one another having sexual intercourse. Because of the evil thought, cause they, cause, cause they, cause the girl thinks that the boy ain't gonna want to be with her if she don't have sex with him, and then the boy gets mad at the girl because she don't have sex with him. Evil thoughts working in both of them. Thefts, stealing all the time, just stealing, just, just thinking about a way that you can get money from somebody, knowing that you're not gonna give it back false witnesses, telling lies that you know that you don't have no factual evidence that what you said is true. Blasphemies. Blasphemies. Telling God you love him. Telling God he's the Lord of your life. And evil thoughts is dominating your life. Hallelujah. Jesus says in John uh 12 and 46, I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Hallelujah. D the darkness is evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. Jesus says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. My God. Hallelujah. The problem with the world today are man's thoughts. The problems with the world today are man's thoughts. Why? Man will not keep his mind on the word of God. Man won't do it. Man won't do it. Believers won't do it. We won't, we won't, keep, our, we won't keep our mind on the word of God. Why? Because of thoughts. Thoughts, too many thoughts. Too many thoughts. Man sin for mind. We got a sin for mind. Because our sin for mind is dominated by an evil heart. Man's mind is too loose, and because it's so loose, Satan is able to use it to his advantage. Hallelujah. Let's read Luke 22, 1 through 6. It reads on this wise. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh. See, every time it's time for you to, every time the word of God draws nigh, every time something of God is time for the something of God for us to get near to it, Satan likes to come up. 
Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread knew now, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him. How, they sought. How did they seek it? They seek it by trying to think of how in the world can we kill him? How can we? He done raised Lazarus from the dead. If we don't do something about this, we're in trouble. We, they're going to believe this guy, and then the, and then the Caesar and Pilate and them going to come and take away our place. We got to kill him. We got to kill him. For they feared the people. The chief priests and scribes saw that them for they, the people. For they feared the people. They feared the people because the people, once Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, man, he had him. Jesus, Jesus had him. He had him. He, the men, the people started to believe. The people started believing. Y'all done, y'all done seen Jesus do something in somebody's life. And y'all ain't, you still walking around being dominated by sinful, evil thoughts. Because, you know why? Because you got a loose mind. Your mind is too loose. Judas had a loose mind. It says, then and a Satan in the Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. Uh-uh, no, 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 we the church now. Guess how many we the number of? We the number of a lot. And I'm telling you, Satan is entering into a bunch of us because we got loose thoughts. We got a loose mind. We got a loose mind. What's the definition of the word loose? Not firmly or tightly fixed in place. Wandering, moving aimlessly, wandering all over the place. My mind can't stay fixed. But then, but you love to say Second Peter, Second Timothy one and seven. Oh, God ain't gave me the spirit of fear. God ain't gave me no loose mind. He gave me a, a, a spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. Your mind ain't sound. Your mind is loose as loose can be. You can't take it. You can't take. You can't take something difficult or challenging. You got to open up your mouth, which is being governed by your thoughts. We'll read it again what Jesus said. We'll read it again because I know y'all, I know y'all gonna fight this message. Those things which proceed out of the mouth, you talk too much. Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defend file the man for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts and them evil thoughts is the gasoline that empowers murders, adulteries fornication, thefts, false witness and blasphemies look at the thing on my notes on my heart it says the battle line the battle line between good and evil runs through the heart of every man. The battle line between good and evil runs through the heart of every man. And Jesus says, out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulterers. See, see, but we should be in, we're supposed to be in the spirit. We're supposed to be in, we ain't supposed to be in no thoughts. See, we think too much. See, that's the problem right there. We we think too much. We we think we think about what we're supposed to do. We think about how we're supposed to react. We think about how we're supposed to talk to people. We think about how we're supposed to treat people. The Bible ain't never told us to do nothing but love. It ain't told us to. Th- I'm gonna tell you, if you get to thinking about loving somebody, you're not gonna love them. You're not going to love them. I'm going to tell you that right now. You can forget it. You can stop trying to find a thought that's going to justify your reason for loving somebody that did you wrong. Because you're not going to find it. You're not going to find it. The chief priests and scribes saw how they might kill him. They was, they was trying to think of a way to kill him. For they feared the people because... Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Them people was ready to ready to submit to the Christ life. Then in the Satan and the Judas Iscariot, that's a shame right there. I'm telling of, of, of disciple of Christ. A disciple of Christ 
drawing nigh to Christ, living with a sinful mind, operating in loose thoughts because of finances. That's what that's what's wrong in the church today. The, the, the loose thought minds, so they can't they can't they won't allow Christ to be all that they need. They still think they need the doctrines and the commandments of men. Still think they need the law of Moses to 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 ensure that the ministry uh, moves forth. That's how that's how Satan Satan enters us through the law. The Bible says. The strength of sin is the law. Satan enters us through the law. Then, then the Satan in the Judas Iscariot. Why? Because Judas had a loose mind. He had a loose mind for finances. That's why churches is corrupt today. On the Discovery Channel, they got a a, a series going on there about the. Hill, Hill Song Church, the Hill, Hill, the big old church, Hill Song, yeah, 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 yeah. How, how the past, how they set that that big ministry up to just take people's money. Hill Song, y'all, y'all always want to run after them mega churches. Keep on running after them. This in the Satan and the Judas Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve, and he went his way. See, he didn't go. He didn't go the way of. God's way. He went his way. He went his way. Why did he go his way? Because he had a loose mind. And communed with the chief priests and the captains. Same thing y'all do. Because your mind's so loose. You a married man, but you're over there communing with a woman you ain't in a marriage relationship with. You're a married woman, but you're over there communing with a man that ain't in a covenant relationship with nobody and y'all gonna and, and y'all gonna have sexual intercourse oh uh, you don't have to believe me you okay all right you think you think you think church people ain't committing adultery you stupid yeah the church people that go to the church you go to yeah mm -hmm, yeah 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 you don't you don't have to believe me you don't have to believe me I'm telling you the Bible says, "Be sure that your sin will find you out." Why is just because that because them sinful thoughts are going to be exposed? Why? Because the Word of God. It's, he says, "Jesus, says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world." As long as Pastor Red keep preaching the doctrine of Jesus Christ, that light's going to be in the world. Y'all finna be shocked with some of the mess God has finna expose in the lives of people that say they're children of God, that y'all know God is going to start exposing them evil thoughts that are overpowering their belief. Judas went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how we might betray him under them, and they were glad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That married man was glad that that girl finally gave in to his desires for her. Yeah, that that married girl was glad that that single guy finally treated her better than her husband treats her, cause that's the thought that she was living by that her husband wasn't treating her right. Jesus Christ did not have a loose mind. So Paul tells us to let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ had a gird up mind. Do you? Do you have a gird up mind? Do you have a mind prepared for something difficult or challenging? Do you have a gird up mind? A girded up mind does not have loose thoughts. It is prepared for something difficult and nothing can surprise a girded up mind. Nothing can surprise it. Jesus Christ put his thoughts into the world. Are you as a child of God doing likewise? 
Jesus Christ put his thoughts into the world. He says, I have come as a light into the world. His thoughts are light. That whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Jesus Christ put his, his thoughts into the world. He put his thoughts into the world. Jeremiah 31 and 3 says, The Lord have appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. Because his thoughts are into the world. Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. And men have been preaching his word to us. His thoughts. His thoughts. A thought is an unspoken word. That's all a thought is. It's an unspoken word. Jesus put his thoughts into words and brought them into the world. Are you as a child of God doing likewise, putting his thoughts into the world? Every thought that we put into the world affects it. Every thought that we put into the world, every thought that you put into effect, affects somebody's life. You got to think love. You got to think peace. You got to think harmony. No matter how difficult or challenging the situation may be, if you got a girded up mind, that girded up mind will always think love. It will always think peace. It will always think harmony. Isaiah 55, 8, 9 says, The Lord says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. See, that's what I'm saying. Judas thought about the money. Then he went his way and betrayed Jesus. My thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways. So when you wake up in the morning, I'm telling you, the first thought that's going to hit you is it, uh, it, it should be a prayer. It's What is prayer? It ain't, it ain't, I'm not going to tell you to get down on your knees beside the bed. I'm going to tell you you can get up, walking out to the bathroom, brush your teeth, and talk to the Lord in thought realm. You can talk to Him in thought realm. You got it. You got it. You got to have a girded up mind. You got to begin meditating. That's what meditation is. Med what do you med We meditate on. We meditate on words, so that if we meditate on words, then then the then the thoughts, our thoughts, don't have the opportunity to uh, activate themselves. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. See, see you, see you looking for, see you gotta, we gotta find another way to draw nigh to God early in the morning. Early in the morning, we got to draw nigh to God. Early in the morning will I seek thee, Lord. Early in the morning. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways. My ways, save the Lord, for the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. We need to draw near to him and kill the wandering mind. The only way you can draw near to him is you got to meditate on this word. And if you ain't got a girded up mind, you ain't going to draw nigh to God and kill your wandering mind. You can forget it. You can say what you want to say. But but, but what I want us to understand tonight is at, at, at some at time, at some time, you're going to have to, you're going to have to win this battle. You're going to have to win the thought battle. It, at some time, in order for you to prosper, 
in this world, you're going to have to win the thought battle. You're going to have to, somebody is going to have to main, keep m motivating you to gird up your mind. At some time, you're going to have to write notes to yourself. You got to say, you you got to, you got to find yourself in situations with people, and you got you got to be ever mindful to say, Lord, please, Lord, please don't let me have a loose mind. God, please help. Lord, please gird up the loins of my mind with Your word. God, please gird up the loins of my mind with Your word, because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, these these demonic spirits is attacking me. I'm I'm being bombarded with a bunch of thoughts. Daniel seven and twenty five. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Hallelujah, Lord God, Satan is wearing me. Amen, God, Delilah woke Samson out. And because Samson didn't have a girded up mind, she got him. She got him. Because Samson didn't have a girded up mind, she got him. Because Peter didn't have a girded up mind, he went into the high priest court and denied Jesus three times because the people didn't have a girded up mind. Only eight souls got on the ark because Achan didn't have a girded up mind. He came out of Jericho with the accursed stuff. You cannot allow your mind to wander when you find yourself in a challenging or difficult situation. You have got to dominate that situation by holding on to the word of God in not allowing yourself to be overtaken by thoughts that proceed out of the mouth, that proceed out of your heart, and then you start talking it out of your mouth. A human mind is a wandering mind. And the wandering mind is an unhappy mind. That, that's why the that's why your mind wanders because because you know the Bible says uh, that uh, hell and destruction are never full, neither are the eyes of man never satisfied. And the reason why the eyes of man is never satisfied is because he got a loose mind that wanders all the time. A human mind is a wandering mind, and the wandering mind is an unhappy mind. Which means, which means we lack a sound mind. How 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 do I know? How do I know you got a wandering mind? Psalms forty two and five tells me. Because I know that you go through downcast days. Watch this right here. Pastor Red go through downcast days. Guess why Pastor Red go through downcast days? Because Pastor Red got a wandering mind and that's how I got this message from God God said God said son God said son stop spending so much time with me if you're still going to operate in the wandering mind when you find yourself in difficult and challenging situations that cause your soul to be downcast. Why are you downcast, oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Why so sad? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Well, if you got a loose mind, and Satan can drop them thoughts in there, you're not going to praise him. You're not going to praise him. How do I know that? Because I don't. That's why I want, that's, that's, do not, do not think that Pastor Red is beating y'all up. I'm, I'm trying to show y'all, I'm trying to be transparent here with y'all and tell you that 
I do it too. I am not more holy than anybody listening to me tonight. We are all still sinners, saved by grace, and the Word of God wants us to know tonight that we need to gird up the loins of our mind and be sober and be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, is walking about seeking whom he may devour, those who resist steadfast in the faith. Every The next time, the next time you find yourself in a saddened state, before you get to running off at the mouth, make sure that you say to yourself, I should have, I should have, I should have maintained a gird up mind. The only reason why I'm sad right now is because I allowed my mind to wander. I allowed my mind to wander. That's what makes, that's what upsets y'all, y'all, y'all. You all because because the Bible says all men are liars. So so you let a so you let what somebody say to you make you happy, rather than allowing God to make you happy. Because Psalm seventy three and twenty eight says, "It is good to draw near to God," but we don't draw near to God. We draw near to people to tell us good stuff that we want to hear that ain't got nothing to do with God. The human mind is a wandering mind and a wandering mind is an unhappy mind. It is not a sound mind. Because your soul refuses to keep his mind on God but on thoughts they have prevented you from drawing near to God in mind and in heart and in spirit because your soul refuses to keep its mind on God. Them thoughts have prevented you from drawing near to God in mind and in heart and in spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Draw nigh to God. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Ain't no greater feeling in the world than feeling the presence of God in your life when challenging difficult situations are surrounding you. When you surrounded by darkness, the beautifulest thing in the world is to feel the presence of God near you. This verse tells us that we have to initiate the short distance. It does not say that God draws nigh to us first because God has already done that when he sent his son. Now it's time for us to draw nigh to his son to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Draw nigh to Christ where God is and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts ye double minded. We must we must win the thought battle. We must allow the word of God to have the preeminence in our life we have got to address 
our loose thoughts. We've got to begin to have a mind girded up in Christ. It is time for us to get ready for the return of the one that we call our Lord and Savior. If you cannot see the condition that the world is in today, talking about it ain't going to solve the problem. Waiting on Congress to help you. I mean, the people were so mad. Steve Kerr was so mad when that boy went into Uvalde and shot up all them people. And he was just like, this 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 law's been sitting in, in Congress for all this time and, and, and they want to hold all this power and because he because they think that Congress can pass a bill to eliminate the uh the 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 high rifle high rifle rifles, them 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 weapons. But no, mm -mm, Jesus already told us what the problem was with that. Right? He tells us already in Matthew 15, 18, and 19. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. So Mr. the man, man, okay, you, you think you can, you, you, guns, guns don't do all the killing. Guns don't do all the killing. This lady was, this lady, a nurse in California was, the nerve was driving and, 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 and drove through the red light speeding in their Mercedes and killed uh, killed six people. Killed six people. Driving fast. Evil thoughts. Thinking she could get through the stoplights. Thinking, see, see, that's what the enemy, the enemy, the enemy want us to, he want us to get in this thought process that is, that is all about the guns. I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not for the guns. I'm not against the guns. I'm not for the NRA. I'm not against the NRA. I'm telling you, it's happening because of evil thoughts. I'm telling you, it's happening because of evil thoughts. The problem with the world today are man's thoughts. That's the problem with the world today. Man's thoughts. <laughs> And, and you can, you, you can, you can, you, 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 Cain, Cain did not have a gun. Cain did not have a gun when he killed Abel. I mean, man, death, death gonna get, death gonna get you whether it be by gun or not gun. You, you think, you think, you think getting rid of guns is gonna stop people from killing people? Timothy McVeigh didn't use no gun in Oklahoma City. That dude used uh, uh, um, ammonium nitrate. Blew up the building. The, the people that was the 9-11, they didn't use guns to take down the World Trade Center and, and then take out half of the Pentagon and, and the crash in the crash into Pennsylvania. But no, but the enemy, the enemy, the enemy got y'all thinking, oh, it's the guns, it's the guns, it's the guns. The, 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 the white people didn't have guns when they was, when they was killing all them slaves. They didn't have, if white men didn't, didn't have no, uh, no automatic rifles when they came over here and, and, took all that land from the Indians. Man, them them evil man, them the the evil thoughts is gonna figure out a way to murder, to murder, it's gonna figure out a way to murder, to commit adulteries, to commit fornications, to commit thefts, to commit false witness, to commit blasphemies. Yeah, I mean, man, come on, man. 
Chauvin didn't use no doggone gun to kill George Floyd. You know, and everybody, everybody, because everybody is, everybody's got a loose mind. They, they mind is loose. And so when you got a loose mind, Satan can drop a thought in there. And the, in whatever the dominant thought is, is what the people in the world today is running with. The people dominant thought is what everybody's running with. That's what's wrong with the in the, in the United States today. The, the Democrats want to be dominant and the Republicans want to be dominant. And everybody's dogging out everybody, but everybody's still falling up in church. They still going to church. They still saying Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior their life. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. That's why he said it. That's why he said in Matthew 15 and 8, this people honors me with their lips. Oh, Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior in my life. I'm a Christian. But their heart is far from me. Don't know the first thing about how to love. Don't know the first thing about how to love. Don't know the first thing about how to draw nigh to God. Hallelujah. It is good for me. It is good for us to draw near to God. Oh, we just got to put our trust in the Lord God. Oh, so that we may declare all his works in the earth. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus sent his thoughts to the earth. Amen. Jesus Christ put his thoughts into the world. Jesus Christ put his thoughts into the world. Are you allowing them to become words that go through your ears, that become your faith that you're walking by? Are you doing that? Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for joining me tonight. I love you. I love you. Thank you for joining me tonight. God bless you. Will you please, will you please, will you please stop allowing thoughts to overtake your belief? Will you start talking to God when you have thoughts that causes your soul to be downcast? Will you do that? Will you do that? God bless you. I love you. I will see you Sunday at 8 a.m. with Pastor King. And then I'll be back before you Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m. I love you. God bless you. Amen and amen.